Hello everybody and welcome to the second section of our URL lib tutorial with Python for web. In this tutorial we're going to be building on the last one and that's with requests. So say we want to make a request to Google and we want to do a search on Google. How would we do that? Well first of all we need to understand how parameters in the URL work. So let's make a search. Let's say we want to search Python tutorials. Okay, and so we do that and we look up in the address bar what has been added here. Well, we first of all we see that we've got this looks like a parameter. So you look for variable equals something, right? And here we see q equals something. And before it we have a pound and then here we have a question mark. Now generally URLib variables will take the following. So var1 will go here after a question mark equals whatever. And then all subsequent variables will come after an ampersand sign. So then ampersand var2 equals j and, and so on. Now on Google, they also use the pound sign. But as you'll see, the ampersand will also work. So let's go back here, research. It knows that, that was we've already done it apparently. <laughs> there we go. All right. So what if we just like did this? Like, can we get away with this link where it's just question mark Q equals Python tutorials? We hit enter and apparently it doesn't go anywhere. Let's try it one more time. No. So let's go back again and we'll end up keeping maybe this GWS here and stuff like that but it turns out that google also has you could do something like this like google.com slash because right now we're on ssl so what if we did slash search and then so let's see search and then we could throw in a parameter like query equals and you could search for these little guys <laughs> or we could search for python programming tutorials which i already have here so it turns out that one works. Now, of course, you'll notice that with these little symbols here, let me get rid of them first. Let's copy. And see how we have spaces here right now. When we do hit enter, we see that our browser has actually changed this on us. And now it's, you know, percent 20 and percent 20 here. So what does that actually mean? Well, that's URL encoding. And we'll, we'll talk about that in, in this tutorial. But you'll, you want to remember to, to do this. Otherwise, it's going to fail. Because it'll work in your browser. You can do all kinds of stuff because your browser is going to automatically fix that for you. But it's not going to work in your program because that's an invalid URL. So now that we have the URL, we can see that, okay, so the basics of this URL are google.com slash search. So that's the beginning of the URL. And then we begin with some variables. So we've got a Q equals what? And Q, I would believe to be query probably. So we know this is the base URL. So let's go ahead and we can just copy that. And let's come over to our URL lib tutorial here. And just for the record, make sure you don't name your file URL lib, right? So it's it's tempting when you're you know learning new things to name your file the thing you're learning about, but don't do that because whenever we go to import URL lib, it's going to try to import your file first. Remember what we were talking about with the modules. So keep that in mind. Don't name this file URL lib. So we've got URL lib request. Now let's make one more import. And that's going to be import URL lib dot parse. And we're importing that. And this is for the, the URL encoding, right? So that's to handle all spaces. So we don't have to do that. We use URL lib dot parse to handle that for us. So now we'll go ahead and just close this and we'll just start afresh. So our base URL again is this HTTPS and then google.com slash search. We'll just call that our URL. And we're going to say that equals, and then we're just going to, you know, just copy and paste that in. Next, we add another print or variable, and we're going to call it values. And values will be a dictionary. Now, for now, we're only going to have one value in this dictionary, but uh, you can have as many as you wanted, and it will handle that. Remember, I was telling you where, you know, the first parameter is always a question mark, and then it's ampersand, 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 and maybe a pound. This is going to handle all that for you, so you just put in the information. So the first variable that we're using is Q for that query. And then now we say what the value of Q is. Well, the value of Q, we're going to make it, we'll do Python programming tutorials. And that's it. 
So now what we can do is build this. So the first step to doing that, whoops, I meant to hit enter. The first step to doing that is going to be data is going to equal URL lib dot parse dot URL encode. And we want a URL encode against the values. Okay. So now let's just print data real quick and we'll save and run that. And here you can see that actually for the query, it just added Python plus programming plus tutorials. So uh, we didn't have to have, you know, percent 20. Nowadays, we understand that that can also be a plus. So you've probably seen that as well, but we can actually probably come over here and do plus plus search that. And as you can see, it was treated identically. So move this back over. And now what we're going to do is we'll delete that print for now. And we want to encode this data as UTF-8. So data is going to equal data.encode. And we're going to encode into UTF-8 formatting. Now, why are we doing this? If you're coming from Python 2, this will be somewhat unfamiliar to you. Because in Python 2, there was no differentiation between bytes and strings. In Python 3, however, there are. So every time you send data to the internet, it needs to be in UTF-8. The internet understands UTF-8. So that means conversely, when we pull data from the internet, we need to decode it from UTF-8. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. It's easy to forget. And a lot of times if you're looking up tutorials online, people are going to post maybe a tutorial in 2.7 and then you're going to try to use it in 3 and it's just not going to work. So keep that in mind. So data and code UTF-8. Now we're going to build the request. So it's going to be rec for request like before equals URL lib dot request don't forget your u dot request dot capital r request and then in here we take two parameters the first parameter will be the url and the second parameter will be the data that we're going to add to our request so that's data next when you make a request you get a response so we're going to call this resp for response equals url lib dot request dot url open rec and that will be whatever the response is then we're going to say maybe resp data and we're going to say that is equal to resp dot read finally we're going to just do print resp data now we'll save and run that and for now we have a method not allowed in for this and so this would be a google.com is telling us our method is not allowed so when you try to make requests sometimes the website is either going to like a lot of websites will stop you from being able to make requests so as you'll see later on as we build a website with flask when you go to create your urls basically in the in the paths you're going to have the choice to either allow people to do searches or not allow people to do searches so first of all, we have to decide, you know, what kind of request was that? So what's going on here is we want the data to be a get request and naturally it will be a get request. But when we use URL encode, it creates, it changes it to a post. So instead, what you might want to do is like the following. So we could get rid of data here and then we could add just append question mark Q equals. And then like here we would we would do data so like we could go we could take this actually and come down here and instead of q and q would be equal to plus data like this and we would no longer need to encode into utf8 and then what we could do is get rid of the q equals we just leave the question mark there and then let's make the request and see what the difference is And then now we get a different error and that's forbidden. So we're going to be talking about this error in the next video. And this, what's happening here is Google doesn't like robots or machines visiting their website. So that's what we'll be talking about in the next tutorial is how we can overcome this minor issue. So stay tuned for that.